Back in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 9, it says, Behold, the day of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai cometh, cool both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the con con constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun the sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Verse 11, And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the, the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Who is that? The Edomite. He's Edomite. Here it is, you ain't nothing but earth and ashes, right? Made out of the richer soil of the ground. You ain't nothing but earth and ashes. And here it is, you proud thinking that everything that's uh, created on the earth and how you set up, you think you did it. You think you did it. You see? Not even giving credit to the heavenly Father and the Son. You think you did it. And that's why we call you the devil. See? Something else on high heels. <laughs> yeah, the women too. <laughs> Something else on high heels. It says, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the of the terrible. Mm -hmm. And that and, and, and he thought he'd have been the terrible man. Man, he 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 got money to stop famines in these countries. Wherever the family is, and what he'll do, watch them die out. Right? Look what he's doing to uh, the people of the gospel. You see? He can, he can, these Edomites in America can tell him he's very lead, look, we ain't giving you no more money. We ain't giving you no more weapons. Okay? None of that. Those people in Gaza uh, need to get aid in there, they need to eat and all that. They can easily do that, but they ain't doing it. They just watch them die, right? You see? And that's the that's the attribute of uh Esau Edom, the anti-life. The structure anti-life. You see? So we jump in. Alright? This is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. It says for every battle of the warrior. Doors. Yeah, you got you got coming there with with uh, horses. You got men marching. You got the, the chariots. That's a lot of confusion, man. With swords clashing and all that. Blood on the garments. Blood on men. All okay? right, that's confusing noise. All okay? right, and then going up to modern times, you got the tanks. You got the jets. Loud noise, helicopters, okay? Bombs being dropped, okay? Drones, gunshots, flamethrowers. You see? We got all that. And more. Lasers. You see? Go ahead. This and garments rolled in blood. Go ahead. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. What it is is the people and the garments and the blood is gonna be fire. I mean, it's gonna be uh, gonna be uh, a fuel to ignite the fire. Read that for me again. And it's gonna be and it's gonna be a thermonuclear war. Go ahead. This is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Right. And garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. So the people, the garments, and the blood that's on them is going to be fuel, fuel for the fire. Okay, just like you add wood to, wood to the fire to uh, make it rain higher or burn harder. That's the way these people are going to be. Okay? 
right? The blood in that garment is gonna make the fire intensify, right? And them. Go ahead. All right, this is uh, verse six. For unto us a child is born. Which is Yahweh shot. See, unto us a child is born. I will say, you see? Go ahead. Unto us a son is given. See, unto us, meaning the Israelites. Okay? Unto us, not them. Not these the heathen nations. Not them. Unto us, the Israelites. Go ahead. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. The government shall be upon his shoulders, man. The nation of Israel shall be upon his shoulders. Go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, see, the Prince of Peace. So those are attributes of him. So read it for me again one more time, that particular, uh, those particular words, or that particular verse. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Mm -hmm. Which is Yahweh, Shai. Unto who, us, like, who the word entering called Jesus. Go ahead. Unto us a son is given, mm -hmm. and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The nation of Israel, go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Power. So the Mighty Power is an attribute of a warrior. So that's the characteristic of the Shah. He's a warrior. Okay, go ahead. The Everlasting Father, meaning the Everlasting Father, meaning that he's going to take care of the elect of the nation of Israel like the Father will take care of his children. He got those attributes in it. Okay? Like a father would take care of his children. So that's why he's called that and his kingdom is going to last forever. It's not going to be interrupted. We're going to rule forever. Go ahead. It says the prince of peace. Mm -hmm. There's going to be peace in our kingdom. Right? The serpent ain't going to be able to go to Eve and convince her to follow uh, doctrines outside of the statute of the command because the law is going to be in our inward part. You see? The serpent ain't going to be able to do that. He's going to be there. He's going to be in the kingdom. What you read in the garden concerning that serpent, how he went to Eve, he's going to be in the kingdom. And that serpent is so called white man. He's going to be in the kingdom. He's going to be a slave to He ain't going to have no power to seduce Eve into uh, separating from uh, Yahweh Shem Elisha. The law is going to be in our emerald parts, man. And it tells you that, that he's going to be there in, uh, let me get it. Let me see if I can find it. That he's going to be there, man. That's serpent. Uh, let's see. If I can find it real quick. Uh, give me uh, Isaiah 65 and uh, 25. I think that's what it is. Isaiah 65, verse 25. It mentions a lion eating straw. I want to say this word is there. Isaiah 65 and uh, 25. And see, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And see, right now, right now that serpent, he has become a dragon. You see, he a dragon, he a dragon right now, okay? But that serpent is gonna be in the kingdom of heaven, right? But he gonna be in slavery. And he's not gonna be able to do nothing against us concern, uh, concerning turning us away from y'all watching that shot. Cause the law gonna be in our empire. He ain't gonna be able to go. You see? Go ahead. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 25. As the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. See, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Like we was reading in uh, concerning uh, Yahweh Shah being the Prince of Peace. So that's a representation of peace. A wolf and a lamb together. That's a representation of peace because if a wolf and a lamb together, the wolf is going to take that lamb. Yeah, it's it's going to be food. You see? Go ahead. It says the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. So, it's gonna be peace. Lion don't eat straw. Lion eat meat. So 
it's going to be peace. You see? Go ahead. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. What serpent is that? That's going all the way back to the serpent that was in Genesis, the third chapter. Right? Who convinced Eve to stray from the statute of the commandment by telling Eve she could be a judge too. See? That ain't gonna happen in the kingdom. Because it's gonna be order, balance. The law's gonna be not in order. And we're gonna be ruling in the Holy Spirit. So we're gonna be able to get up in there and cause the people to go up in the court and the They ain't gonna be able to do it. You see? So read that for me again. Alright, this is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 25. It says, The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, the lion and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. Mm -hmm. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. Now dust uh, represent uh, a low state confusion. And they're going to literally lick the dust off our feet. That's what it's going to be. Okay? And that's when we as a nation will be truly blessed. Right? To what nations will bow down to us. Okay? They tell you that in Deuteronomy 28, when you look up the word blessing now, nations going to be bowing down to us, man. You see? Because we're going to be the representation of the Alphashim Yahushua on earth, ruling in the Holy Spirit, man. You see? The law is not in one part. Go ahead, bro. It says, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, said Yahweh by some Yahusha. The government of Israel, man. You see? Mount represents government. That's all you got to do is read Isaiah the second chapter. You see? And it tell you what a mount represents. It represents government, right? So what I want to do is get that in different translations concerning that. And see what we come up with. Isaiah 65 and uh, 25. Bible Hub is uh, Isaiah 65, verse 25. It's the New International Version. It says, The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The dust will be the serpent's food. They will they will never, they will neither harm nor destroy on my holy mountain. Says the Yahweh by Yahweh God. Trying to pick him up something right here like that. Brother. brother. <laughs> <laughs> Old school looking for a woman, boy. I thought that, that was a brother. Oh, that was a female? Yeah. Damn. That's why I said I was looking at the brother over there. <laughs> I ain't even paying no attention. <laughs> Damn, she choosing. <laughs> she choosing, right? <laughs> you see? So, how, how? Is uh, the serpent able to destroy in Yahweh's holy mount? Now, this is Judah, right? This on page uh, five, and I go straight to the point. Uh, it says this uh, Judah chapter five, verse uh, fifteen. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites, and they destroyed their their. They, they destroyed by their strength all the... That ain't what I want. Hold on. Okay, that's verse 17. Verse 17 is what I want. This uh, Judah chapter, because I just want to go straight to the point. 
This Judah chapter uh, 5, verse 17. And while if they sin not before their power, they prospered because the power that hate of iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captive into a land that was not theirs, right? And the temple of their power was cast to the ground and their cities were taken by the enemy. So when we pursue Yahweh Shemal Shai, that's when Esau healed me. That's when the serpent was able to cause it to where Israel would have that sin in them and they would be going off and they will be falling, losing their land, going into captivity. Get delivered, fall again, go into captivity. And this is the last captivity and in the kingdom, we not, we're no longer going to uh, captivity because the law is going to be in our inward part and that serpent uh, that the guy Eve in the garden, which is a so-called white man today, because that same spirit is in him, that's no longer going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. So we ain't going to depart. Because if we depart from Yahweh Shemal Shai, according to Judah, the fifth chapter, right? That's when they were able to get us. That's when the nation was able to get us. So uh, uh, that was being ran down to a general uh, the Babylonian hollow hollow burning uh, was being ran down their history concerning the nation of Israel because the Babylonian general he was going after the nation of Israel and that history was ran down to him. He was telling them, look, if this nation ain't sinning against they, they they power, then you can't get them. But if you but if they going against their power, being rebellious, oh you can get them. So that's the same way with us in the kingdom of heaven. When the law is getting out in part, we're not going to be against our power. So ain't nobody going to be able to get us. Right. You see? So read that from the end. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 25, the New International Version. It says, The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like, like the ox. Mm -hmm. It says, The dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says Yahweh by some Yahweh Shah. It says the New Living Translation. It says the wolf and the lamb will feed together, the lion will eat hay like a like a cow. But the snake will eat dust. In those days no one will hurt or destroy on my holy mountain. I Yahweh by some Yahweh Shah have spoken. Yeah. You see, that's what it's going to be, man. We ain't going to fall again, man. You see, so the serpent going to be there, but he ain't going to be able to do that, man. You see, he ain't going to be able to come against us like that no more. And we're going to lose forever, man. You see, so that's it on that. Uh, the, I'll give the Amplified. Oh, yeah, give me that. Give me the Amplified. This is the Amplified Bible. It says the wolf and the lamb will, will gaze will graze together and the lion will eat straw like the ox mm -hmm. there will no longer be predator and prey mm -hmm. says, and dust will be the serpent's food they will do no evil or harm in my holy mountain Zion says Yahweh by son Yahweh alright so go back to who he was in uh, Isaiah chapter 65 Right, this is Isaiah chapter. Read the attributes of uh, the house Characteristics of the house Oh, yeah. We, we read into uh, we read ninety-five, but we don't read. We start reading the six, and I jumped there. But I was talking about the uh, certain prince of uh, peace. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. This is Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. It says, "For unto us a child is born." Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, 
and his name shall be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the a Ever. Warrior. Yeah, he's a warrior. Go ahead. The Everlasting Father, because he he gonna take care of uh, the nation of Israel, you know, like a father would take care of his son. So that's natural. You know, what I'm saying? and his kingdom gonna last forever. Now we shot kingdom in the nation of Israel. Kingdom gonna last forever. Go ahead. Says the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Man. We ain't gonna have to deal with no war like this again. The war we gonna be taken down. Nah. That's it on that particular verse. Okay. So, uh, uh, the government gonna be on their shoulders. So, the conditions of the earth, Israel gonna make it out of. The elect of the nation of Israel gonna make it out of. Right? Matter of fact, get the uh, because we are gonna be looking down. Lord willing, we the men endure to the end. We are gonna be looking down. Give me uh, Revelation uh, the fifteenth chapter. We are gonna be looking down, Lord willing. And seeing if we're gonna be in the chariot looking down and seeing America get cooked, man. Right? And other parts of the land get cooked. Yeah. Man, right. let me see. Let me see. Revelation is uh, Yeah, yeah. Alright, this is uh this is Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last having the seven, the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up, filled up the wrath of the Most High. Yeah, that's complete destruction. Go ahead. And I saw as it was a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the Most High. Verse three, and, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the Most High, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord power almighty, just true are they, just, just and true, are thy ways, thou king of saints. So, what I want to do is get that in a different translation, then I'm all I'm going to it. That last particular scripture, right? Ah, uh, no, you can start at one. So Jake can get it. So, All right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna go into it. Go ahead. All right. This is uh, this is Bible Hub. This is Revelation chapter 15, verse one. It's the New International Version. It says, "I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign: seven angels with the seven last plagues." Yeah, that's the previous question. Go ahead. It says, "Last, because with them the Most High's wrath is completed." See. Go ahead. The New Living Translation. Then I saw in heaven another marvelous event of great significance. Seven angels were holding the seven last plagues, which would bring the Most High's wrath to completion. See? So, that, what the Amplified says? That's the Amplified Bible. It says, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and wonderful, a warning of terrifying and horrible events. Seven angels who had seven plagues, affliction, calamity, which are the last because with them, the wrath of the Most High is finished. That is, is it completely, completely expressed and reached with uh, Zenith? I, let me change this battery. 